daughter was uh, sentenced under Judge Shiverella. Um, yes, that record's been expunged at one time, yes. Hearing what all the testimony today, you want to go back to the focus here, which are the, the victims in your mind, right? Talk about that. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've been at this trial every day, and I knew that this was not, the main focus was not going to be on the children, but I, what I'm surprised at right now is it, it seems like it's been totally excluded from the trial, and that that's, it's making me feel very emotional, because um, this is an emotional issue for our children and, and our families who were victimized by this judge and this this conspiracy of corruption. Do, do, you, do you think it's almost too black and white that they're, they really suck the emotion out of it, that the things that families like yours have gone through sort of the jury really doesn't have a grasp of all the pain? And well, yes. I mean, I understand it's necessary, all the, you know, the checks and the wire transfer sheets and the, the taxes information and all the numbers, and it's just, I'm a, I am emotional that it's these families. Isn't it nice that they have all this paperwork? We have we have one mom who returned home and found that her child was exchanged for a post-it note. Like, where is the documentation for that? Where's, where's the documentation of the parents who called and who cried and the kids, you know, bawling on the phone, Mommy, I love you, I'm sorry, and I just, I don't, I don't understand. Mrs. Transu, are you afraid that the real scandal in this story isn't being told in open court? Yes. I mean, I contacted Juvenile Law Center in 2007. This story about the money didn't come out until 2009. And we're talking about our children. The, the most in re important resource this county has, the, the state, the nation, the world. And um, I'm not saying that it did not get any media attention. It did get a small amount. But boy, when that story broke, uh, I was in a, a luncheonette and everybody was talking about the money, the money, the money, the money. I called one talk radio program and I said, hey, what's up? You, you never talked really about this much before, but now that this money thing broke, it's all over the place. And I was told that wasn't true, but it was my experience that it was true. Talk about seeing the judge in there after what you listened, heard him talk to your daughter the way he did before. If you could just recount that experience and then seeing the judge in there again today, four years later. Um, well, I don't, I don't notice such a look of arrogance on his face um, the past couple days. In the beginning, I did, and, and there were some comments made um, about uh, from attorneys about his demeanor in court, and that absolutely fits with the Judge Chivarella that I had to deal with with my daughter. What did he say to your daughter? Um, he, when we walked in, he didn't really say anything. He kind of stood and put his palms on the bench and leaned over and said, what the hell makes you think you can get away with this kind of crap? And my hand was on my daughter's shoulder, and she took a step back, like, okay. And I thought, well, maybe this is, you know, like, I'm going to be tough, and then I'm going to give you the real sentence. And trial, that hearing didn't last 60 seconds. This one, oh, I'm sorry, has so far lasted six days. Is that galling to you that you see him getting uh, the, the, the full treatment of the court system, that he has the rights of to bring his witnesses and to have a trial and to at least no. have a representation? No, this is the way it's supposed to work. And I want it to work that way. I don't want to say we, we were robbed of a fair trial so no one else should have one. The whole point is, is these kids deserve to be heard. The, the difference is that children went to a hearing and, and the object of the juvenile justice system, to my understanding, is to, um, to help these children and families, to prevent them from um, um, developing a, a pattern of criminal activity and, and, you know, offending the system as adults. So it's more of a, a rehabilitation process and to work with families. But in this case, this is adult court. This is an adult who is responsible for the decisions and the actions that he did, and now he needs to account for them. And then we're back to why isn't he accounting for what happened to these kids, for what he did to these children and families. Back do you to think that. the people are going to feel cheated? Do you think the children are going to feel cheated? Do you feel cheated? I do. I have some background. I, I was a caseworker for many years, so I've been to family courts, so I know that um, you never get to say everything you want to say on the witness stand. It, the, truth, the truth does not all come out in court, 
but I think this is a huge part of what's going on. This is, it all boils down to what he did to these children. And the fact that that's not part of this, that I have a problem with. But do you think, that's the way the law works. Do you think that with the wiretapping, the, the transfers of cash that we heard about, the friendships, the relationships, that they established this racketeering charge, right? Um, are they missing what in your heart tells you was the most important mark, blemish, dark hole of uh, this case in Luzerne County? Yeah, I don't understand why they're not looking at the transcripts of these children's so-called hearings. Why aren't they talking to the parents? Why aren't they saying what happened in court? What happened when your lawyer tried to speak? Why isn't that being told? Because that's part of it. If, if former Judge Chivarella conducted fair hearings for these juveniles, I can't imagine that a fraction of them that were sent away would have been sent away. So obviously there was some motive to to sending these kids to these facilities. How important do you think that aspect of the case was to getting a conviction here? Well, I'm hoping <laughs> that it isn't going to be a huge part of it. But and, I, and like I said, I realized that that was a possibility in this trial, but. Um, as far as I expected it to be part of it, a, a significant part, not the whole thing, but I don't, I just, I'm a little baffled as to how, how could it be overlooked? Have you, have you talked to the prosecutors or have they consulted with you or any parents no, as far as? No, I have not. Okay. From what you heard in court, would you, would you, from what you heard, would you still call this the kids for cash scandal? That has played such a very, very small part of it, and and I'm not a, an attorney, but to me it seems that if you're proving the conspiracy part of it, I thought, I guess that's where I thought, um, you know, the kids for cash part of it, sending juveniles away for minor offenses that in other counties wouldn't even gotten to court. I thought that would have been brought up as part of that, but again, I'm not an attorney, and I don't know all the details of the case. I'm, I'm just somebody, you know, with a yeah, personal interest, but I'm just watching. I've tried to be impartial or at least keep my mind open and put myself in the perspective of the juror, not out of kindness, but just trying to, to see what they're thinking. You, you mentioned the money and how the money really sort of sparked this and people really started to pay attention. The Juvenile Law Center filed a an action in April of 2008, I believe, or May 2008, that the Supreme Court overlooked or, or did not take until the you're, indictment or the, the information came correct. out. Do you think that that sort of, that maybe the needs of the kids and the rights of the kids were sort of a secondary issue even then, that, that the Supreme Court didn't really no, take action until they were kind of forced to? I don't know all the reasons that the, the court made that decision. Um, I, of course, was disappointed in that decision. But I would say that in a way, Hillary and I were not surprised, my daughter and I were not surprised by um, the fact that money was involved. In one way, we were almost a little pleased because even we realized, you know, it's two schleps from the, the burbs that uh, this was going to get attention to our cause. But I never imagined that this would kind of supersede what happened to those kids. Lauren, do you worry that the fact that this portion of the case didn't come out in the case that that could somehow impact the civil suit? I mean, your ability to win that case? No, I don't, because I think we have a lot of evidence. It's all there in the transcripts, testimony from kids, testimony from parents, testimony from lawyers who can be subpoenaed who were in those courtrooms, law enforcement officials who were in those courtrooms, probation officials who were in those courtrooms. It happened. There's no doubt in my mind that it happened. I have personal knowledge, and I've talked to so many other people, and so I know it happened. And I, I don't. I think our civil suit is very strong. Is that sort of, sort of the civil saving grace, maybe coming out and, and having that evidence come out then? To at least